young and old, rich and poor, believer and unbeliever. Your journey back home is the one that really matters. And then once you're home, it starts again. We traveled, alhamdulillah, with the chef in his himmat, by his orders. We went there, we went to Ayasofya, we went everywhere. But it's good to be back here too. And it's good because the Darga is representing something. What is your home? Darga means the threshold to divine. What does that mean? Just as uh, the doorway, there is a part before the doorway. You cross that doorway, and then you open the door, you enter into a new place, no? So, a Darga is representing that. You are entering into a place that is preparing you for another place. To open the door and then to enter you to be in divine service. What is divine service? That is taqwa. Understanding that Allah is watching you. If you don't see Allah, to know that Allah is seeing you. Everyone has different idea of home. But if you really sit down and start thinking, what is your home? You come up with certain things that seem very basic. Uh, my mother is there, my father is there. I have spent a lot of memories there. I have uh, good memories and bad memories. I had a life there. Important times I spent there. That is what a home is. Which is not much. But as believers, we all know that this place, this earth, this is not our home. We spend time here how much? You're 20 years old, 20 years. You're 40, 40 years. 100, 100 years, but that's it. Do you think Hazrat Insan is 100 years old? In the old days, the prophets and the nations used to stay and live in this world for hundreds of years, thousand years. Hazrat Yunus know, alayhi salam, he was over 900 years old. But do you think Hazrat Insan, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the angels to bow down to the secret that is given to us, we're only 100, 1,000 years old? No. This is the thing. Allah is saying, I'm a hidden treasure and I wish to be known. So I created the world. The world is who? What is the cause of the world? The light of the Prophet And we are his ummat to discover that treasure. The Shah Afendi is saying, man is a hidden treasure. Man is the hidden treasure. But we don't know ourselves. This is not our home. No matter how much you're saying, I like this house, I like this land, I love this person, I love the people, this is not our home, this is for the believer. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying completely opposite, saying to know that your sons, whatever you possess, whatever you love, whatever you attach to, this is nothing but a distraction for you. It is nothing but it is a confusion for you. Not to say that you're not going to love, you're not going to have responsibility, you're not going to help, but for the believer to know your home is not here. Who is your family? You have to understand. Family according to nationality, only your nation is your family. Prophet came to break this. 
So I'm saying my family is the one according to my skin color, according to my religion, according to... But Allah Himself is saying, our Creator, only the believers, they are brothers. It's not even saying Muslims, believers. No matter what label you put yourself, the belief is something else. So our job is to find the believers. And once you are with them, then they will remind you who your family is and what is your home. You start remembering things a little bit. You start feeling things a little bit. We are here because our Shaykh is here. Our strongest connection to him is here, yes. But did our Shaykh come from here? No. And did our Shaykh pass here? No. There's another big uh, secret there that you have to know. Because although we are here in this physical place, it is the one who put his spirit here that made this physical place to have that spirit that we are pulled to. And that one is powerful enough to say, I put my spirit here, here, or here. That is for easy, easy way for him to find, for us to find him. But it's not about us. His work and his legacy is not for us, it is for others coming. It is for the whole world, it's coming. So that time, even if you say, I miss him here, I can't find him physically anywhere, where is he? He is in you. Those ones who are here, those ones who have been trained, those ones who have seen him, those ones who receive sohbet, it is in you. And when you go and others who are finding him, they will see him in you. So although you are saying, I miss him, he's not here, stop looking at yourself. Start looking at others. Because if they see you and they say, ah, you're coming from here, you know Sahib will say, they're holding on to that, they are more important than you. You understand me? That time, their home, their return is through you because how much spirit that you are carrying from our Shaykh, that much is that home. No matter how you feel, not about how you feel, is to bring it to others that are thirsty. So that one who was not from here and he didn't pass here and he can make this, he can also put it in so many different places in the world and he can put it in us too. So if your heart is there with him, then others will look at you as home. And this is our responsibility. Maybe you are feeling far away separated, you need to come back time to time, it's okay, we are humans. But especially as Naqshbandis, especially as Osman Naqshbandis, we are not tied by place. Our Shaykh is not tied by place. Really, or even by so many people. So, inshallah, our purpose here is for worship. We're coming here to escape from this world, to worship. Don't bring the dirtiness of this world into the top of the mountain. Remind yourself this. And especially I'm speaking to the men who are out there living in this world. Don't get pulled. Otherwise, what is the difference? Why are we here? If we want that dirtiness and we also want this, why are we here? We must make a difference. As Shaykh Andy said in so many sohbats, you cannot work for shaitan and then work for Rahman too. Some, they want both. There is a word for that in Islam. It's a very heavy word. 
is worse than an unbeliever. It's called a hypocrite. We should look for that in our hearts. We should take it out. These words are for me first, and then whoever they want to listen, take it. Take it and put it in your life, and you'll find uh, safety, you will find nourishment. Do it for yourself. Don't do it for anyone else. If you don't, it will catch up on you. We cannot hide as much as we're trying to. Someday, somehow, it will come out. You cannot hide something that is good. You cannot hide something that is bad. There will always be witnesses. But we do something good and we say we don't want to show this, that is good. If we do something bad and we say we don't want to show this and we're asking for forgiveness, then according to our intentions, you'll find Allah very forgiving. But if you're stubborn and arrogant, forget about it. And in this way, our Shaykh is tough with things like that. The way that we are, the path that we are following, there are things that we have to do. So first for me and for those who want to listen, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you. وَمِنَ اللَّهُ تَوْفِكْ رُمَاتِ الْحَبِيبِ رُمَاتِ الْفَاتِحَةِ